what is going on guys the heart pirates tcg here and uh last week of the new format before the pre-release starts so i just want to kind of go over some of these uh i know obviously japan has a lot different of a meta um that i actually talked about i'm not sure if i'm gonna post this video before or after um the can newgate you know rad beam comes out all that jazz right but um why is this not playing oh it is playing okay um so yeah i, I wanted to um I wanted to like go over these over some of these matches just to kind of show what the deck can do into certain matchups. Now, obviously, like I said, it plays different because you know Zoro has access to four rad beams and you know Marcos and all that, and that's what you're going to see. You're going to see a lot of rad beams. You're going to see a lot of Marcos. But um, guys, if you haven't joined our Discord, you totally should. Uh, the link's going to be in the description below. I'm very excited for. Um, I'm very excited for some stuff coming up in the future, and we just have a good community on there. You can buy, sell, trade, have conversations, you know, deck building techniques, all that type of stuff. We got a good community on there, um, some very good players in there too. So uh, without further ado, let's kind of go ahead and start this. So I've noticed that a lot of the Zoros are playing the Teach engine. I think this is because um, either, I haven't, seen, I don't know if Luffy is, is legal in this, in this format yet, but um, either Luffy or Whitebeard and Teach is just naturally good into both of those because he obviously is over the 6k threshold but you know with his ability he's at 7k and with Zoro he's at 8k so he's naturally swinging 2k over pretty much on his own um, and plusing off it as well he's easy to defend with you know having a 2k we're, we're, we're having you know a 6k body as opposed to swinging into a 5k body right it's obviously way easier so um what i do notice about rebecca is rebecca is very good at starving the opponent out of resources i talked to my friend hasm who uh you know top date with law and he told me the same thing uh, rebecca naturally starves you out of resources and i did watch this game last night at like four in the morning when i couldn't sleep and that's just something that i noticed so i'm very excited to uh commentate on this so it looks like rebecca is going to go ahead and use her effect and what rebecca does for those of you guys who don't know um rebecca taps a dawn if she has six or less cards in hand uh she looks at the top two cards of her deck searches for a dress rosa adds it to her hand and then trashes the other one then she is uh so she go ahead and go goes ahead and adds uh, gets and gets is a 2k counter that on play can let a character on their field attack uh an active character this turn um and then he goes ahead and uses 3000 worlds and i also like how we can see their hand too by the way guys um so 3000 worlds that teaches what the teach away then zora goes ahead and swings seven at the rebecca he goes ahead and takes it and looks like he's going to play another teach right there and he's going to go ahead and pass now obviously this version of zoro is a lot slower than you know some of the other versions we're seeing it depends on what we see you know if if rad beam comes out um there's a lot of lists that zoro can play um, i do think zoro just naturally loses to rebecca um i think zoro naturally loses to a lot of different things uh, film though flamingo um and then we're going to go ahead and see luffy luffy in addition to uh the the, the uh stage which is coliseum uh, the Dressrosa Coliseum can attack active active characters, and he has rush towards characters. So um, he's going to go ahead and swing seven at the uh, Teach. He's going to 2k counter out of that one. He's going to return seven cards from his trash to the bottom of his deck, and then he's going to restand him. However, he can't restand himself automatically during the refresh phase of his turn. Then he's going to go ahead and swing seven again, and he's going to go ahead, and I believe he 2k counters out of this one with an Otama. I don't think it's Makano. Um, it is Makano actually, so I guess he doesn't have much use for Makano. He'd rather keep the Otama in his hand. And as you can see, guys, you see the Marco, uh, you see the five cost Marco, you see uh, Teach, you see uh, Blocker Marco, and you see a Rad Beam and an Otama. So he has very good cards in his hand. Let's see if he can pull it together. Now, of course, even I, I know in my last video, if if I did end up posting it um, before this video comes out, I said that I I think that. You know, adding Radbeam and Marco just prevents other decks from being able to shine, and um, I, I full I wholeheartedly agree with that. No matter how well Rebecca does or Do Flamingo does, um, the decks that Zoro and Whitebeard can just beat by existing will always keep certain decks out of the meta, and I think it's bad for the game. So it looks like he plays Otama to put the Luffy down to a 5k, then he's gonna go ahead and swing seven at it with. Uh, teach he's gonna let that luffy die then he's gonna swing seven at life and what he's gonna do he's gonna uh discard a 2k and he's gonna discard a 1k um and he's gonna do that because he wants to use rebecca's effect ba basically you want to use rebecca's effect as much as possible it's a free it's free resource and you can get tr stuff in the trash which uh your deck revolves around being in the trash and of course that's where luffy gets his effect that's where king kong gets its double strike uh or, or king kong gun or kong gun whatever it's called uh kong king gun wh whatever it's called right 
um that's that's how they get their effects and he's gonna go ahead and play a sabo sabo basically is a draw two discard two and your characters can't be ko'd by effects he's gonna discard rebecca and he's gonna discard a gats and he's gonna swing six at the uh the teach right because they have coliseum and coliseum can attack active characters and then uh he discards the last card out of his hand uh or the last counter out of his hand then he goes ahead and plays a uh, Kiros, and Kiros can pop a one cost, and then obviously he has Rush, and he's going to go ahead and kill the uh, the Teach. So uh, that's the end of his turn. If you guys don't know Kiros as well, whenever you would be able to kill him, uh, you can tap your leader or Colosseum instead to save him. So basically, he has two lives, very similar to Marco most of the time. Marco, you discard an event to save him. Kiros, you tap a uh, character to save him. Obviously, I think uh marco is a little bit better just because uh one he kills a 3000 power which is very um like it's very easy to manipulate power in in red um and then two he's just a 6000 body um i know that you know i know kiros is a 5000 body that is i think harder to kill than marco of course um but you know with with uh zoro's effect marco is always swinging seven and um he's just very good at like getting rid of blockers you know kiros has to pop a one cost you know so like he has to work in combination with cards like or lumbus or you know kuzan or whatever so like his effect to like kill anything bigger than a one cost or like a three cost even is just a lot harder to get off than it sounds so uh looks like he's gonna go ahead and swing uh, uh eight over at the uh, Sabo and Sabo is going to go down and he still has a lot of down to work with here I assume he's just going to put a lot on Zoro swing and then play the uh the teach but he's not going to do that he's actually going to put uh four Don on Otama and uh attack he counters out of it then he swings with Zoro counters out of it uh with two 2ks it's obviously the Bartolomeo who's a blocker as well as a 2k then he goes ahead and plays teach so uh decent position right here I mean not great but not horrible uh for the uh for the Zoro player and uh, looks like he's going to go ahead and use uh, Rebecca's effect to go ahead and get a, looks like another Kuros to hand. Uh, he's going to swing six at, I believe it is the Marco. Then he's going to obviously counter out of that. And then he's going to tap, it looks like seven, play that Luffy. Luffy's going to go uh, eight at the Marco, or I'm sorry, at the Teach. Teach goes down. He's going to use Luffy's effect again to put seven cards on the bottom of his deck to restand him. And he's going to be able to attack the uh marco now which is probably going to get met with a rad beam discard so um overall solid just drains look and, and look what i said guys you know when i when i was talking about this is um just naturally starving the zoro out of resources he has zero cards in hand and five life so for those of you guys who don't know as well if you haven't been paying attention or, or playing a lot of the uh opo4 meta is you'll see that um rebecca be, can be played in a lot of different ways you know one's like the kind of starve tactic um and the other one's like the kind of the and, and, and you know that revolves like the or that uh revolves around like the control aspect of the game um but the other one is kind of like an otk variant of it right so like you play luffy you know you play luffy and then just like like have him sit there or like whatever like attack an active character and then restand him right and then you just make him sit there and then the next turn you know if they have kong if you have kong gun you swing 13 at life right they take two hits you know in an ideal situation then you restand them and then do 13 at life again with double strike both times. So uh, you can do four damage in one turn if you want to, or you can pretty much kill your opponent in one turn, depending on how it goes. So um, a lot of people are playing um, Rebecca like that, and I think it's really cool. He goes ahead and uh, Kiros kills the uh, kills the Marco, then looks like he has another Luffy, uh, and Luffy's probably just going to you know play himself and then attack into the uh, Marco, and then probably just restand himself i probably wouldn't tag into the easy i don't really think there's a whole uh there's really a need to looks like his hands kind of clogged the kiros kiros is not a counter guys so he is a uh kind of a brick in hand and then he's gonna go ahead and play luffy luffy's gonna go ahead and attack the marco he has no cards in hand so that thing is not coming back then he's gonna go ahead and restand him and he's actually gonna attack the Izo, which i think is a little bit of a uh I think it's a little bit of a misplay here i, I mean you know what what is Izo really gonna do except for attack like i mean i guess he can put all a lot of his down on Izo, but seems like kind of a waste of a turn you know um or i guess that's more of like an ideal kind of turn because he's gonna do the same thing with um with otama anyway right so um he's gonna put like dawn on zoro and dawn on otama and just swing swing so um i don't really think there is a point to to do that with izo especially because next turn you can just pop the izo with a kiro so i think that was a little bit of a misplay right there 
Um, I, I, what I learned, guys, is like when you're when you're doing when you're in these games, like a lot of these games come down to like, you know, oh, if I had one more turn, if I had one more attack, if I had one more counter in hand, right, then I win. And when you waste, you know, when you waste cards or attacks on like these characters you don't need to attack, then um, it just feels like you're in a losing situation. That, that that's all. It feels like you you put yourself behind when you don't have to. You know, why would you kill a character? Um, why would you kill a character when you didn't have to? Or why would you kill a character with an attack when you when you could have killed him with a uh, with an effect the next turn, right? Basically for free. Um, and now Luffy wouldn't. He's not going to be able to restand himself. Now he can obviously. Um, oh, actually, he doesn't have anything in his trash, so uh, he's not actually going to be able to do that. He goes ahead and plays Kiros. Uh, Kiros goes ahead and pops the Otama. Uh, and then he uses uh, Rebecca to search the top three to find a 2K counter, which is the Bartolomeo. Then he goes ahead and plays the Sabo. Sabo is going to draw two, discard two. He's going to discard Kiros, and he's going to discard, I think that's a Rebecca. And he's going to activate Rebecca's effects. Sorry, there's a lot going on. This is in two times speed. Rebecca's effect is going to find a Gats, and his hand is full. And Zoro's hand is empty and his field is empty. So obviously a commanding position right here. I'm sorry, he has one card. He has the uh, Marco. Oh, that, that's draw for turn. Yeah, so um, obviously, um, you know, our Rebecca player is in a, in a commanding position now. And this is what Rebecca can do to Zoro, absolutely. Um, especially if he draws right. I think that Luffy's a really powerful, really, really, sorry, a really powerful card. And um, this is kind of where the OTK factor comes in. Now, this, now I will spoil it just a little bit. Um, our player on the, um, our, 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 our uh, Rebecca player on the right, he didn't draw a Kong gun basically the entire game. If he had a Kong gun, he actually wins this game like super easily, right? Because he puts, he, he obviously uses on, uh, on Luffy and then swing, he double swings and uh, double swings again if you wanted to, or just does, you know, five, five, uh, Kong gun, double swing, do the rat less, the last of his life and then, you know, uh, swing 18 for for life so he didn't find it here which is unfortunate but um, at the same time he's still able to do a lot of damage just because of the lack of cards in the uh, Zoro's hand uh, he is very happy to take that the, the the those hits and just try to find something that can you know get him out of this situation whatever whatever rut he's in so it looks like he finds another rad beam finds a uh, buggy finds an Izo, finds a blocker Marco he's gonna play the Izo first which means he values characters which is smart playing the Izo first allows you to find cards like blocker Marco which He's gonna find another one, uh, so he's got two of those in hand, which you know, in in certain matchups can, you know, be very hard to get over. But in this deck, not so much, right? So um, he's gonna play buggy. Buggy's gonna search for a guard point, so he's got seven k worth of counter in hand. Uh, he's got guard point, rad beam, and double Marco. Then he's gonna swing eight at uh, life. He's gonna go ahead and use Sabo, and then discard a three k worth of counter, and then he's gonna go ahead and play Marco. And he's gonna go ahead and pass. So uh, two life, one blocker, a couple cards on the field, a couple cards in hand, only one Don active though. Um, he's gonna swing seven at life. He's gonna go ahead and uh, guard point out of that. Then uh, he's gonna go ahead and use, I believe it is Rebecca's effect to search for, uh, I believe it's a Leo. Then he's gonna go ahead and use, um, can't think of the name of it, but uh, Sword of Destruction or something, Thunder Sword of Destruction. Basically, it kills a four or less, and if you have 15 cards or more in your trash, it kills a six or less, cost six or less, and it costs four or less. So, um, kind of like a Brachio Bomber, almost, in, in a sense. Um, so, that, that's kind of what it's used for. Goes ahead and uh, does his last life, triggers into a guard point, boosts uh, his leader by a thousand. Uh, and then he's going to go ahead and rest five right there to play another Sabo. Sabo's going to draw two, discard two. He's going to discard 3,000 worlds and that blocker, uh, Idio, I think his name is. And he has five cards in hand, a couple 2Ks it looks like. It looks like he's got uh, two 2Ks. He's got two blockers on the field. Pretty much over from, from what I from what I can tell. He's going to swing six at life right here. He's going to 2K counter out that one with Gats. And um, guys, uh, you know, obviously this game's about to end, but... I want to thank you guys for supporting me throughout all this YouTube journey uh, time that we've spent together. So um, I, I'm very excited for this next set. I think that these decks definitely have uh, these new decks definitely have like a way of shaking up the meta. Uh, there it is right there. Our Rebecca player gets the game. Um, guys, I'm going to probably post a few more of these just to kind of get a good uh, just to kind of get some good gameplay of like what other people are doing. Obviously, it's going to be different than ours because, you know, we have certain or we don't have certain cards that they have. Hopefully that stays true in OPO4, so we have truly a different meta. Um, but yeah, that was a super cool game, and congrats to the Rebecca player for playing pretty well. Um, I do think he could have done a couple things wrong, but or I think he could have done a couple things different, but that's just me personally. And I'll see you guys on the next one. Peace.